Hello and thank you for joining us today. This presentation is brought to you as a courtesy of Pacific Modern Homes and Red Tape Express. Well, it's that time again. Every three years, the California Energy Commission updates the energy standards for residential construction, and a new set of standards will go into effect on January 1st, 2017. They are the 2016 Energy Code, and they include some new mandatory requirements for all residential construction. It will be mandatory now that all indoor and outdoor lights be high efficiency. That can be compact fluorescent or LEDs, but they will have to be high efficiency. Ductwork leakage has been reduced from 6% to 5%. Not a big deal. This is pretty easy for most contractors to do. The change is just reflecting that the industry has learned how to install tighter ducts, so this shouldn't have an impact on anyone. However, there is a new requirement that there be isolation valves on all demand water heaters. And what you're going to find is that demand water heaters will become the prominent water heater for construction now and into the future. They've also increased roof insulation to a minimum of R22. Hardly ever run into this, but every once in a while you have a small sloped roof area. It will need to be a 2x6. It cannot be a 2x4 if it's part of the roof because it'll have to accommodate R22 insulation. These are just some of the mandatory requirements. However, the energy standards are also based on prescriptive standards. The prescriptive standards are used as the basis for the energy calculations that our office provides for most of the houses for Pacific Modern Homes. One of the new prescriptive requirements is high performance attics. In dealing with high performance attics, the Energy Commission was interested in making sure that they reduce the heat in attic spaces. As a result, when you're dealing with a typical attic space, you'll have vents along the perimeter of the attic to get sufficient air to eliminate any type of humidity buildup inside the attic. In order to accommodate that ventilation, baffles will need to be installed that prevent the insulation from blocking that opening. But as part of the high-performance attic, there will be a new baffle now. That baffle will be up above the original ceiling insulation and it will hold back the insulation that's at the top cord of the truss. This will be a requirement in climate zones 4 and 8 through 16 and as you look at the little diagram off to the left you'll see that that's the majority of the state of California. For all practical purposes while it's not required in the remaining zones it will be significantly beneficial to have it in those areas and still make the house comply. In addition to high performance attics you're going to find that we have requirement now prescriptively for demand water heaters. In the past the baseline standard used for the computer programs was a tank water heater. It is now a gas demand water heater. There's also an increase in wall insulation and there's also an increase in the duct insulation. Most locations will now have to have R8 duct insulation. And whole house fans are now going to be required prescriptively in most locations throughout the state of California. However, there are some improvements that the Energy Commission has provided us. Homeowners will now get a credit for installing photovoltaic panels. It must be a 2 kW minimum, and it's only allowed in climate zones 1 through 5 and 8 through 16. This means that if you're down in the San Diego area or right along the coast in Los Angeles, you will not receive that credit. Uh, but it's a very small portion of the houses built in the state of California. There's also credit for tile roofs. They now recognize that a tile roof has air venting underneath it. It keeps the attic slightly cooler, so there is some credit for that. However, despite these credits, all of those new prescriptive requirements have a significant impact on compliance. In the past, most projects could comply by just putting in a high efficiency furnace, putting in a tankless water heater, and maybe one or two other minor improvements, and there was no change required in the remainder of the house. That is not what we're going to be facing under the 2016 standards. In fact, when we look at what has happened, we'll notice that houses that were built under the 2013 standard that were just passing by 1.8%, oh, some up to 2.3%, are now 27 to 45% above the energy budget. This means that there will need to be some changes done in the way that we handle our houses. This is all consistent with the Energy Commission's goal to try and achieve a net zero house by 2020. However, don't panic. These can be fixed, but they will be changes that we have not been required to use in the past. You can assume on most new projects that the exterior walls can still remain 2x6s with R19, that the roof trusses will remain the same, and they will either have R30 or R38 insulation at the ceiling.
we could still use standard mill guard windows with normal low E glass. And we still have just the basic HERS requirements for duct leakage, airflow, fan wattage, and indoor fan airflow. So these are not big changes. A lot of what we've done in the past are still going to be acceptable and be part of your standard construction. However, in order to get to the new standards, we're going to have to make some changes in the way that we're doing construction. Part of that is going to be looking at different options to achieve compliance. You can generally anticipate that the building orientation overhangs on the south windows, the percentage of glass in the skylights will have a significant impact on the number of options that have to be used. You can anticipate also that in most cases there will be a need to insulate at the top cord of the truss. There will be a need to install a gas demand water heater where there's natural gas or propane available. There is an option to use a heat pump water heater or electric water heaters with 50 to 60 percent solar factor when there is no natural gas or propane available. However, if natural gas or propane is available, you are going to be looking at needing to install a gas demand water heater. Most cases will need to install a high efficiency furnace or a high efficiency heat pump to make it comply. In some cases, we may find one of the most cost-effective improvements is installing a whole house fan. These are the large fans that ventilate the entire attic. They may run uh, up to three to 4,000 CFM. They're large fans. They fit between the trusses. Most of us have seen those. They're fairly inexpensive, about $1,500 to install, but they can provide up to 10 to 12% credit. Sometimes that's a very cost-effective credit versus some of the other improvements. So these are some of the things that we'll be looking at in order to make a house comply. We need to start talking to clients about not installing recirculating hot water systems, even the large houses, unless they are willing to put in a demand recirculation system, which means that it has a push button or some type of activation system so that the water doesn't recirculate until there is a need for hot water at the specific location. Those are the basic options. However, when you're dealing with additions, there's one change that is going to into effect this year, and that is all new exterior walls must be two by six unless the wall is an extension of an existing two by four wall. So you're going to find that most new additions will have two by six walls in them. We will not be able to use two by four walls anymore, except in the one limited uh, case where the Energy Commission acknowledges there's no reason to have people looking at a bump in the wall just to get the 2 by 6 uh, installed. Now the Energy Commission has estimated as part of these standards that it will add an additional $2,700 to the cost of construction but it'll provide $7,400 savings per home over a 30-year mortgage. I've talked to some contractors about what I feel are the realistic installation and upgrades that'll be necessary. I think you're probably looking at more in the five to eight thousand dollar initial cost upgrades that people are not used to doing in the past. So you need to pass this information on to your clients. They will recover it. These are all good energy efficiency upgrades for houses, but they will have an additional cost that will have to be absorbed by the owner when they're building these new houses once the standards go into effect. Right now they're scheduled to go into effect January 1st of 2017. Don't expect any delay or extension this time. The Energy Commission was very diligent. They had all the codes, the manuals, and the software completed the first quarter of this year. And while it's not all perfect and they're continuing to make updates to it, there is no reason to believe anybody is going to file an objection. Now, if you want some quick resources to share with people, the Energy Commission at the website listed below has provided a little one-page description of some of the basic upgrades that are required. It's not very comprehensive, uh, but it's quick and it's simple. If you want something a little bit more comprehensive, you can go to a website called Energy Code ACE. This is a group of people that have been funded by the utilities to provide a little bit more detailed and comprehensive information. And I think they do a very excellent job of this. And they have a two-page worksheet here. They call it a fact sheet. And it steps you through all of the changes that are required. Much more comprehensive than what we're talking about today. So if somebody wants more detail on that, they're welcome to look at that. There's also a four-page document available from the same group. And it's really designed for energy consultants. But it steps you through section by section of the code as to where the changes are taking place. And if somebody wants to download that, the web address is provided there below. 
I hope you find this information useful. My name is Dave Morgan. Uh, my company is Red Tape Express. We've been providing Title 24 energy calculations for over 30 years now. And uh, we're learning and growing through this new change just as everyone else will be. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call or send me an email. Again, I hope you found this information useful today. Have a great day.